Welcome to the Milk Creek Government Channel. I am Judy Salina. Uh, people with diabetes, I want to talk a little bit about diabetes, and people with diabetes need to understand, monitor, and manage their diabetes to stay healthy. Today we're going to be talking about taking steps to manage your diabetes. And who better to tell us all the little tricks of the trade on how to manage and monitor that diabetes is Judy Halcom, who's Hi, been with Judy. us before. Judy is a registered nurse who keeps trying to retire, and I say this every time, <laughs> but as you notice, we still keep bringing her back. Right. Also joining us today, we have Justine Carota, and Justine is also a registered nurse, and she is a certified diabetes educator yes. with the Erie County Diabetes Association. Yeah. Welcome, Justine. It is a Thank pleasure you. to yes, have you two ladies. Great. Again, uh, I told our viewers we're going to be talking about something very important here taking steps to manage your diabetes. Right. How do Absolutely. we do that? Well, first of all, Justine, I think you should tell everybody what self management really means. Well, self management is more a bit getting an understanding of your diabetes and learning all the steps and tools that you can use to help you keep in the best of health. And that includes a multitude of things. It may be monitoring the foods we eat, activity, our medications, but all the things that help us gain a better understanding of us and our diabetes and what we can do to keep us as healthy as possible. Okay, now that is, that's my responsibility, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. This isn't something that, all right, I'm going to a doctor, so he can worry about all this and, right. and tell me what to do, right? 99% in my mind, Judy, of managing diabetes is self-management. Yeah. We use a team of people like a physician, like nurse educators, community resources, but the buck stops here. So I think the important message from our show today is really to ask people to look at yourself and say, how do I want my quality of life to be moving forward? with a diagnosis or without a diagnosis of diabetes, mm -hmm. and then move from there to find out the tools that are available. Don't get into playing the diabetes game, which is so easy to do. My doctor will tell me if something has to change. I don't have to do anything to contribute to this. That's not good. I think the main thing is your doctor is not with you every day. So you're the one that's making decisions about what foods you choose. Am I going to monitor my blood glucose today? Am I going to go for that walk? You're the person that's in charge. Now you might use your healthcare team to gain the information of what you should be doing. What are your goals for monitoring your blood glucose? Um, what dosages of medications if you take medications? But ultimately you're the person that puts the medicine in your mouth or does the yeah. injection. So you need to have an understanding of what's going on with your body and how are all these things going to affect me because what affects me might affect Judy in another way or right. you in another way so it's very personal and it's realizing we all have choices yeah mm -hmm. but we can make different choices but guess what the result of the choice is a consequence mm -hmm. if you don't like what you see happening that's when you have to look at yourself and say what action can I take to turn this around in little ways, like we always talk about. Right, right. That's it. Okay, I wanted to, add, okay, Justine, say I have an example, using me as an example, say I've just been diagnosed with diabetes. Okay, first off, you know, there, there's a lot of times denial, shock, oh confusion. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, I know I have to get a handle on all of this, but how important is it to immediately start thinking about managing your diabetes? Because that's something that most people might think, okay, wait, let me get Down all this in order road. and I'll worry about that later. You got it. That's it's not it's the really right, something right that you at least want to initiate earlier rather than later. At the mm -hmm. beginning, correct? At the beginning, mm -hmm. because once you start to get a basic knowledge of some of the information, then you can build upon that. Mm -hmm. I think that the biggest thing that I find is most people with diabetes, they get told this is your new diagnosis, you know, they don't know what that means. Exactly. 
They don't know what being a diabetic means. And they may have it throughout their family and they know mom took insulin and dad had to eat a certain way and grandma had this problem, but they don't actually know what diabetes is. Mm -hmm. So we have to start there. And I find that once people get, oh, this is what makes me a diabetic and someone else not a diabetic, mm -hmm. the other things start to fall in place. Justine, um, again, explain to our, our viewers, what is diabetes? There is a type one and type two. Again, could you, you remind our viewers or let some of them know who aren't familiar with it, the difference between them? I try to make it very simplistic. Oh, I'm I a like very, simple. Oh, I'm a I very, like explain it to me like I'm a two-year-old <laughs> kind of person. <laughs> so this is how most people seem to get it, okay? Normally, when we, we eat and drink foods, our body changes over to glucose or sugar. It's really not a dirty word. <laughs> it actually is energy for our body. It's our energy source. So everything that we eat and drink, it gets converted over to sugars, okay? Our bodies have this wonderful organ in our body called the pancreas, which produces a hormone called insulin. I call insulin the doorkeeper. The doorkeeper, because what it does is it sends out the signals for your cells, which our bodies are all made of cells. Okay. The cells need to open up and let the energy inside instead of just floating around doing nothing. It's like having the air around us, but if we don't breathe it in, guess what? It's not gonna be really helpful to us. Well, what's happening with someone with diabetes? If you have type one, okay, there's been some kind of autoimmune problem or toxin problem. There's all these different theories of what causes the type one. But basically, those people don't produce any insulin, okay? So there's nothing to trigger those doors open. So they have to take insulin by injection or a pump or something like that. The majority of the people that have diabetes are type two. We used to call it adult onset, but that's not the case anymore because we're starting to see younger people with it. That's scary. Yeah. yeah, and it's one of two things or both going on. Okay. Okay, so those people might eat and drink, food gets converted over to glucose. That pancreas maybe doesn't work quite as well as it used to. Okay. So it makes insulin, but maybe not quite enough. So that door doesn't open nice and wide. That door kind of inches open a little bit, okay? So all that energy can't get inside. You can't squeeze through that small little opening. So we have that extra glucose or energy still circulating in our blood. The other group that we see are people that are insulin resistant. So they are producing insulin, but it's almost as if their cells have dark sunglasses on. And your, your cells are going, I, I think there's something there. I, I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to open a little bit because I'm not completely trusting that that insulin is there. So you have the same effect. That door just creaks open a little bit. So that's what's going on. If the energy can't get into the cells that are going on, so think about yourselves. If you can't get the energy from your food inside of you, you're hungry, you're starving, you're not nourishing yourself. Okay. okay, and that's exactly what's going on in your cells because you can't get the energy inside the cells where it's needed. All right, um, thank you so much on that because it does, it does cl clarify, uh, you know, the type one, type two, yes. right. and Again, people, they have pre-diabetes. They'll say they have pre-diabetes. That is, their numbers are starting to get a little bit higher. Is that what, exactly. was that what people, They're not in do the, they still call it pre-diabetes? Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. yes that's I the never know if things change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still pre-diabetes, right. right. Okay. So those are those people. I said, remember, right. you know, your pancreas makes insulin, okay. but maybe not quite as much. Okay. There's that window of time mm -hmm. where the production is starting to slow right. down. So those are your pre-diabetics. And the only thing, devil's advocate, that I always play, you know, just to say to you, Justine, if I'm told I have diabetes, do I really care if it's type one or type two? What I care about is how is this going to affect my life right now? Right. And what's gonna change? And the minute you mention a change, people resist. That's right. human nature to do that. So give yourself some slack mm -hmm. after the initial diagnosis. Breathe it in and say, okay, one step at a time. Now what can I do right now? And like you're saying, the sooner you make a contact with somebody that can start you on a positive road, the better off you are than floundering and saying, oh, I'll just wait. Next time I go see the doctor, we'll discuss it or whatever. Well, one of the things that we have at Erie County Diabetes Association is a program called Survival Skills for the Newly Diagnosed. 
And that's a program where I actually meet with someone that just has that new diagnosis or they're gestational diabetics, meaning that they're pregnant and their blood sugars have risen. Um, so one, I do explain the process. What is the disease process of diabetes? But the, one of the first things I actually ask is, what do you know about diabetes? How has it affected your life? Because how someone feels about it or what they think they know about it will directly dictate how much I can even get in. Right. If they're not interested, you talked about being in, in denial or being frustrated or angry. Right. So you kind of have to know where they are because you have to meet them at their level. What's important to me might not be as important to someone else. So with this new diagnosis, what's important to you? What do you think you need to learn about the most? Because you might not care about check, checking your blood glucose levels. You may not care about activity. You might just want to know, can I eat potato chips? Right. That's your only focus in life right. because you know I eat this every day and I use it as a real example of a patient I had who used to eat a bag of potato chips every day. That oh was my. his vice. And so that was what he was really focused on. He still ate his potato chips. He didn't get the big bag mm -hmm. anymore. He would count out 20 potato chips every day. Yeah. So that you have to sense. kind of get an idea of where they're starting, what's their mm -hmm. knowledge right. base right now, what okay. are their interests, and also how best do they learn? Right. Because everyone learns differently, you know, and, and I try to use tools when I go out. I have my little video screen where I can show videos. Some people want material that they can hand and read and read and read. Some it's just conversation. So I try to kind of get a feel for what do they know, how do they need to learn more, and also open the door to encourage them to seek out a formal education class on self-management. Right. Okay. Uh, let's start. Let's let's move back a little bit. I've, I'm just newly diagnosed. Okay. Justine or Judy, truly, how do I start managing my diabetes? You know, you're giving me some ideas and some stuff, but it's kind of overwhelming still. Tell me, how do I start this? What do you suggest? somebody does to start managing their own diabetes? Well, the biggest way to manage is by the healthy eating aspect. So helping them to look at food. And a big thing that people will say is, so now I have to cook special foods for myself. You know, I have to cook for the rest of the family. How, when they bring up the issues, we try to fill in the information okay. gap. All right. mm -hmm. but not presenting ourselves like this is what you have to do because that's going to meet with resistance. Yeah. And also age, myself being older, we don't want to change at all. We're set in our ways. Oh, yeah, think. Okay. Yeah, think and so you changing. might yeah. say, oh, but healthy eating doesn't have to be problematic. But let me tell you what I'd like to do. Now, how is diabetes going to fit in my right. life? not right. me get controlled by my mm. diabetes. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. And, and we have to Big be very difference. aware of that. Yes. Uh, um, just recently I was at the Mill Creek Mall for their back to school expo and I had the privilege of meeting a, a bunch of young people that were diabetics. And I'm talking they were 14, 15 mm. to 17. Mm -hmm. um, and it was interesting because the parents had a game plan uh -huh. and the diabetic, the kid themselves, had another game plan, yes. <laughs> and the <laughs> two weren't meeting up. And, and, right. and so what I try to, t to try to help them to do is kind of bridge. The goal is the same. You want to be healthy. But mom, maybe you need to kind of back off a little yes. bit. And you, as that teen with diabetes, you need to show that you're responsible for managing your diabetes. So mom and dad, because I have both parents, mom and dad are trusting that you're taking care of yourself. And so age is a very important part because yeah. teens struggle with different mm -hmm. things than I might struggle with, okay. or someone that is 85 with diabetes may struggle with. It's, a, it's different. Right. And that is true because, as you know, my nephew yes. is type 1 right. diabetes. He was diagnosed, I believe, at the age of 9. And yes, those teen years are tough. Oh and yes, gosh. sending them off to school mm -hmm. for the whole day yeah. is scary. Mm -hmm. So, you know, mom has to trust that son or daughter is going to take the proper steps or recognize if if something is not going right. Yeah. Scary. I mean, one even, of the things even we type two diabetes, yeah. it's all scary. Well one of the other things too is is having more people. Even though I'm not a diabetic, 
I still should have an awareness. So if I work in a school, I should be aware of diabetes because I have potentially students or co-workers that are diabetics. Um, you, you ask the question, what is the newly diagnosed person supposed to do? We're hoping that their health care provider will point them in the direction of a diabetes self-management education class so that they know, okay, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to go here and they're going to help me with it. Oh, great. Oh, that's Absolutely. great. Yes. So that's the hope and goal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't always happen. Oh, no. So the first thing they could do is call us at Erie County Diabetes yeah. Association right. because um, if they get a hold of me, the first thing I do is I ask some key questions. You know, who's your doctor? That helps me guide where we might want to refer them to. Um, I try to see what the fit is of that person because different personalities respond to different people. Um, if there are barriers, for example, if they're newly diagnosed and they have no medical coverage, guess what? That's what we're there for yes. um, because yes. we do provide that service for people that are uninsured and underinsured. So we are that neutral party that kind of refers mm -hmm. people to where they need mm -hmm. to go and, and try to help them with the options that's available to them. You, were ta you mentioned barriers. Um, Justine, what are some of the barriers oh my goodness. to effective diabetes management? There are so, so many. One is readiness. Yeah. Literacy here in Erie County is a big issue. And, and when I say literacy, I don't always just mean reading and writing. There's health literacy. Um, what I find is a lot of the information that's out there is not as simplistic about health, we have to keep in mind that these people aren't doctors or nurses and they don't always know our lingo. And that's you know something that's really concerning. Uh, financial barriers, you know, Erie City itself specifically, high rate of poverty. Yes. So I can't afford or think I can't afford healthy foods. I don't know where to go. I'm limited in my choices. Um, there's the safety factor of neighborhoods. People, we tell them to exercise or go walk. Well, if safety is an issue, I can't go walk, I don't feel safe. Um, you know, we have a large immigrant and refugee population. So language is a barrier. You know, there are a lot of people don't have their resources. Um, it, it can go on and on. Mental health issues is another big one that we have. Where, you know, we have people that, maybe the interest is there, but they need extra support, which is another one of our programs that we try to provide to people that need those things. But we try to help, what are the needs what are the resources and we try to match them up so that these barriers that they might encounter we can start to kind of peel away at them so that they can concentrate on what they need to keep themselves as healthy as they can. And I think it's important that, that you're there, the Erie County Diabetes Association, because there is a lot of education that an individual and family, yeah. because it is exactly. this disease does not just happen to the individual, it's, it's a whole yeah. family it is. Um, it disease. Is they don't know where to go for yeah. education. Yeah. Right. They, and they need education. Yeah. They need education about healthy food, how you can eat healthy, affordable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. I just saw uh, on the news today about or organic and healthy, mm -hmm. healthy food, how expensive it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So people would love to be going more organic and eating healthier. Right. Mm -hmm. But they end up going, you know, with more of the junk stuff because it's affordable. It's affordable. It's easy usually. Exactly. It's convenient. Um, one of the, the things that we found when we did the Erie County Health Assessment back in 2012 is there's that group, specifically women, that at about 30 to 44-ish, you know, which are the moms, that they're busy. They're working. So we do something quick. What can we grab on the way home? Because we are going from work to a sporting event, to a practice, to it, and, and, and that's what happens. So when you, know, you talked about cooking for the diabetic and then you have the other people in the house, um, what I really try to, to help my patients that come to my classes do is learn how to shop healthy on a budget. I actually prepare something. So it's not just a bunch of talk and papers I'm pushing. Here's your recipe. I prepare something and then I have them slow down and taste the food. Tell me what's in this, because a lot of people don't taste, we shovel things, you know what I mean? So taste the food, because I, I'm a foodie, so I love food. Mm -hmm. But I want to stress to people that you can have really great tasting food that's healthy, that is not expensive at all, and everyone can enjoy it. And, and I, I'm the queen of deceit, so don't advertise it's healthy, because once you state that, 
you'll get the noses turned up right. in the air. So I always say, just Especially say the kids. You yeah. Say it's healthy for so, you. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, you know, don't <laughs> even <laughs> advertise it. Just put it on the plate and put it on the table and let it go for what it knows. And if you have, if you discover some healthy things, you'll, you'll find people eat it. So there's no need. It's not just about you being healthy. Wouldn't you want your entire family healthy? So what's good for one of us is actually good for everyone. So you're setting the tone. And we're also not going to have to retrain our children as they grow up to eat healthy because it's just a habit. That's yeah. just how we eat now. It's been a part of the way Correct. That they were Absolutely. raised. Absolutely. Right. And that's yeah. the primary goal. You know, we want families to wage war against diabetes, not just the diabetic that's already has the diagnosis. What can I do? I mean, I have diabetes in my family. My grandmother died from complications of diabetes. I have cousins and uncles with diabetes. So it's, it's in there. <laughs> so when I look at it, I also was pre-diabetic at one point in time. Um, so when I look at my children and now my grandchildren, I try to prepare things that I know that are healthy for them. You know, because I want to see them grow up and, and be healthy, happy kids and, and happy, happy adults. And I do think that you, you are seeing this sway of um, these younger parents giving healthier snacks, don't you think? I think there is a definite trend in that direction. Mm. See, what's oh, hard yeah. is with people like you and me, yes. Judy, really. Right. I mean, you know, we were the meat and potatoes and yes. you clean, you finish everything on your plate, plate. and you clean That's that right. plate and, oh, can I please have more gravy? Right. And I, we, look back on our eating habits so we really had to be retrained mm -hmm. yeah yeah right so i think it's right. great that you're educating people yes of course through diabetes but it's filtering down to people who don't have diabetes and are right. actually without knowing it they're preventing it well we had this issue in my house this week my my grand my daughter and my grandchildren recently moved into my home within the last month and my husband and I, kind of old school, so to speak, you know, we have the four grandkids that kind of turn their nose up at certain things. And um, my daughter said, you better finish everything on that plate or, you know, we have dessert. And I said, and I didn't say it obviously in front of the kids. And I kind of pulled her and my husband aside because he's guilty of this too. I said, you know, kids are really good. I, I understand we want them to eat healthy foods and not just be selective. I said, but we have to be mindful and be very careful of making them eat more than they want to eat because that's why we are the way that we are today. We feel like we have to clean that entire plate because there's kids starving in Africa. When we're full, we don't recognize the triggers that we really are quite content already and we don't need to eat more. That's why we find the restaurants that give you all the food and we take the buffets where we have you know, all these choices. So we have to recognize and recognize, hey, I'm full, I can stop now mm -hmm. and push the plate away. And I said, you're not going to let them do that <laughs> if you're making them, you know, eat until they can get the, root, the dessert. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? And for a diabetic, that's one way of managing your diabetes. Yes. Correct. Mm -hmm. Is pushing when that plate full, away. Pushing the plate away. Mm -hmm. Exercise right. plays a big part, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I, I think if anything, when, you know, I think when we think diabetes, we automatically think food. What I can't eat anymore. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> the, I can't eat this. I know, there's this grieving process that people go through, and they do deprived. a mental checklist right. of the things I cannot it. eat. And I think what I've, I've really tried to say to people is, I think that that's a really important part. But if you don't do anything, just get moving. Yeah. If you don't do it. anything, get moving. Just even march in place. In march the house in if place. You don't want to go outside and it's. Sub zero temps. Move yeah. more and you and can eat a little more because exactly. you're going to burn up some right. of those calories. Right. Or Absolutely. we talked about the children. You mm -hmm. know, you know, the kids are on the games yes. and the computers, Daddy. they're texting right. on the phone. And we just had that the other day. The kids were inside and I said, you know, it's sunny outside. Get out. <laughs> Go out. Jump on the trampoline. Yes. Run around the house. But get out of here. Exactly. It's eerie. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be like this much longer. Yeah. <laughs> Take you're it right. all in. You're right. <laughs> Now, ladies, tell me, how can the Erie County Diabetes Association help facilitate self-management actions? Well, I think we are sitting here proud of the fact that due to some recent monies that we've gotten through the Highmark Foundation, okay. we are able to offer the newly diagnosed or people struggling with barriers mm -hmm. the ability to talk person to person with someone mm -hmm. and 
move to the next step, okay? okay? So we are so grateful for that, and we right. wish more people would take advantage yes. and stress to their doctors why they should be referring to the Erie County Diabetes right. Society. We are the Bridging the Gap Agency. Exactly. And I think it's important, too, if there's anyone out there watching that are uh, a part of an organization, um, really just give you guys a call. Mm -hmm. Have someone come really in and talk about uh, how to prevent diabetes, or if you are, especially this, right. how to manage your diabetes. Yes. It's right. overwhelming. Right. Yes. But you also have some uh, literature. You have newsletters, don't you? Yes. We, yes. Have, we have our newsletter, which is a, a hodgepodge of all kinds of information that you need, okay. from recipes to resources to, you know, what are the healthy checkpoints, what are some of the programs that we have coming up so that you know what we're doing at Erie County Diabetes Association. So all those things were really very helpful. Support and groups too, right? Yes. yes. We do have a support diabetes group. support group that we hold the third um, Monday of, of every month um, at Glidwin United Church at 11 a.m. Okay. Uh, all right, in the, in the support groups, again, don't you probably learn something uh, every time you go to a support group? Maybe someone will give you a little tip of what they're doing and, and people will say, whoa, I never thought of that. How, how easy. Right. So it's a it's they you support each other, but you're also learning from each other. Aren't you're supporting you? each other, and you're finding out. Guess what? It's not just me affected. Right. That's right. right. And I think that that's, that's one of the big biggest thing. things. The common theme I hear from people is my family doesn't understand, or they don't support me, or you know my yes. friends don't understand, and they mm -hmm. don't support me. But if you've got a group of people that they themselves are diabetics, they get it. Okay. And the, we invite them to volunteer at the Diabetes yes. Association, too. That's we one really good way. We can use volunteers. Okay. Always. How can somebody get a hold of you, you ladies? You can call us at 814-454-0715. That's our main number, and you can ask for myself. I'm Justine Carota. I'm the Diabetes Nurse Educator. Or you can actually shoot me an email, personally. Sure. That's jcaroda, K-U-R-O-D-A, at diabeteserie.org. Or you can actually go onto our website, diabeteserie.org. Excellent website. Oh, it is. It yeah. really is a great website. Tells you a lot more about all the things that we have going on. So it it's a really wonderful does. resource. I'm going to tell you something. Um, the Erie County Diabetes Association, wonderful organization. Uh, I've learned so much just from doing these programs, reading their newsletters, and especially looking at their websites. Uh, ladies, thank you so much for joining us thank on today's you for having us. program. Welcome. Let us know what steps we can take to manage our diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a wonderful ongoing uh, set of programs that we've been doing here to educate um, residents here in the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much thank again, you. viewers. If you have any questions, uh, interested in volunteering, or yes. if you just need somebody to ask some questions about or concerns that you have, Feel free to give them a call, check out their website. Viewers, thank you for tuning into the Milker Government Channel. Until next time, have a wonderful day. You're watching the Mill Creek Government Channel, powered by WQLN Public Media.